So I'm wondering if we'll get a little bit of a, a time skip here. So much happened in the last episode, I feel like. Certain things need time to develop. The sun rises on a new era of Piltover. Our city is about to turn 200 years old. It's shaping up to be an amazing progress day. <laughs> Look at the confidence on this guy now. He had that big success. Stanwick Padidly. Everything he built either exploded, melted, or toppled over. True inspiration. The council has recommended you give the progress day speech this year. W but... He's a celebrity all of a sudden. Your hex gates have done wonders for our city. Brought scholars from distant lands, reignited passions in... That's what it did. It was teleportation. You deserve this honor. That's very humble of him. These airships, though. Are we ever gonna hit the world map? Probably not. Everything seems to be going pretty well in Piltover. 200 year anniversary, new technology, big celebration, but there's a lot bubbling underneath the surface. Yeah, I mean, this is a huge game changer. And I'm sure the applications of this are basically unlimited. He's got his face on banners. Look at this guy coming up in the world. Thomas Edison over here. A beacon of trade and prosperity for our great city. <laughs> he loves it. Look at his face. Loves it. Loving it. He's a very busy man. <laughs> I saw that. He's got his admirers, too. She'd do anything to keep me from seeing the real world. Is that her mom? We'll have front row seats to the speech. Have fun hurting the drunkards. <laughs> Why do I have a bad feeling about that girl? She's directly on the front lines for when things inevitably go wrong. Based just on what we've seen so far, it seems like there's such a huge divide between how present each side is on the other's minds. Like, when we were in the sort of underground city, we were hearing about Piltover all the time and all the terrible things they were doing and how horrible they were. So far, as far as Piltover dialogue is concerned, I don't think we've heard any talk about the underground city from them. It just seems completely off their radar, which means they're likely going to be majorly blindsided when things start to hit the fan. And this girlfriend, love interest girl, is right on the front lines. It's a little bit surprising, you know, that this is like a very joyous and peaceful opening to this episode after the events of the last one. There's like this weird sense of peace that can't be trusted. Everything's going great, you know what I mean? Everything's going fine. We're the best we've ever been. Manifest. This guy looks familiar. Friend. Downtown. This girl looks familiar. Got these cool hoverboards. Little stalactite grenades. They're expanding. Check for more below. Burn it all. Who are these people? A little monkey tag there. Wonder if that's connected to. She's here. Yeah. I'm sure they're fine. Hi. That's her. She really grew up. She got really good at making these traps. These are very elaborate. She was always a good shot, right? Oh! Oh, what the heck? I feel like there's still a chance, no? There's still a chance something could... There's still something in there? Oh my god. It's rattled. It's all shook up. You are supposed to guard the cargo. Uh, yeah, Powder's gunning for the top. So a couple guesses about Powder. She's gonna have a major chip on her shoulder. I imagine she'd be very sensitive to being in subservient roles or anything that implies she's not capable or doesn't contribute. I'm also gonna guess, and this is sort of sad about the way that interaction went, that although she's probably gonna be telling herself a lot of stories about how she's strong and doesn't need anyone and how she's right about what happened with V, Vi, there's a big part of her that would probably like to go back and undo that. And I feel like in that moment, she surprised herself by what she felt when she saw Vi again. She may have been psyching herself up all this time, sort of pep talking herself into being the way she wants to see herself, but at the end of the day, they, they were sisters, so you can't should your feelings to that extent, but she definitely figured out how to be capable. Heimerdinger believes science should be used to improve lives as much as we do. We just need to show them it's safe. This guy's not looking too hot. What do we have on the docket? I really appreciate that this guy came around. It all began with this. He could have, like, doubled down and stuck to his ways. They've made materia. Hex tech gemstone. Ah! Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> So they stabilized it. This new version is stable. 
and absolutely safe. This is huge. We can now <laughs> yeah, this materia. Devices. Oh. How many materia slots do your gauntlets have? Yeah, this is all for, for work, right? Totally for work purposes. Definitely not weapons. Could do with such a device. Right, our art of artifices or whatever he said. It's finally possible. Whoops. A little foreshadowing. Obviously, there are a few kinks to iron out. And so like not zapping the audience. Yeah. But give it a decade of careful research. A decade. We'll, we'll have it done in ten minutes. <laughs> Putting that kind of power into everyone's hands is dangerous. Keep at it, and I'm sure you will discover a way to safeguard hex tech against misuse. I'm with the funny daddy on this one. <laughs> I like putting these insane weapons in people's hands, but I also definitely see the potential. In fact, I think this is a way bigger deal than it initially appears, you know? There's this concept when it comes to improving the world that I think is really important, but is not really talked about all that much. When I hear discussions about how to improve people's lives, a lot of the talk revolves around money. The issue is that money isn't really so much a thing in itself as it is a representation of other things, which if things are going right, would be value, which is why you can't improve things by printing money because you can't print value. Of course it can be given, right? Money can be given and that can be an exchange of value. But the issue is that by giving someone money, what you're doing is you're taking the value from one place and moving it to another, which helps the person that receives it. But in terms of more systemic progress, what would actually go farther in improving society on net would be increasing the ability and efficiency of creating value. One way to look at it is like if you have a pie, right? You take a piece of pie and move it over here. You've changed the location of the pie, but you haven't actually increased the amount of pie. What actually would change the situation would be to find out a way to make pie easier or to have more pie. So that from here on out, there will always be more pie, if that makes sense. And in that sense, innovation is one of the greatest tools in improving people's lives, assuming it's innovation that actually helps people make things better or easier that we need. So I feel like people who innovate, you know, people who find methods to do things better, more efficiently, faster, assuming that they're doing it in an ethical way, I feel are underappreciated and actually do a great service to society. What Jace has done, assuming that we can get past this whole like, these are deadly weapons thing, will potentially even save people's lives in terms of like food production, increasing yield, medical technology, safer travel. The ripple effects of this are too big to even comprehend, I think. The only question is like, well, are there any major systemic threats? Like for example, could this technology be used to hit a failure point in society that affects more people than it helps? But this is a sign of things to come. Speaking of being on the front lines, this is all coming true. We're working on this ooze. Don't eat it. Okay. <laughs> there was a firefight! Anyone seen that movie? Boondock Saints, that's what it is. She's no ordinary bee cop. You're still here? I didn't do anything. She's crazy. <laughs> They're like done with powder too. Who were you working for? I can't. He'll kill me. Nice try. You almost got me. <laughs> You're supposed to be guarding your mother's tent. I was. Is this the guy? Faces and difficulty and all that. There's more going on here than just the smuggling. I know. I'm taking bribes. Undercity looks more fun. <laughs> Are they also having their progress day celebration? Yeah, Undercity is my sort of vibe more than Piltover. Piltover feels a little bit stuffy, pish posh, and all that. Let me tell you, I got some stories. <laughs> you guys would be shocked. I don't know. I've always been drawn to this kind of thing. I've always been drawn to this sort of seediness, if that makes sense. There was a time where this was sort of my scene. There was a, a place I used to go to in Seoul. I think it closed because of COVID, unfortunately. But one of my favorite things to do was after a night out, go to this bar called Old Town. Old Town was on a hill in the foreign district affectionately known as Hooker Hill. But this bar would open at four in the morning. <laughs> and the windows were tinted black so you could pretend... The night hadn't ended. And the people that showed up at Old Town, it was never dull. My friend got hit by a car standing on the front steps of Old Town. A lot of characters there. It's weird how much I miss those days. Like, there was a time I was making about a thousand dollars a month, working part-time as a teacher, 12 hours a week. I had an apartment about the size of this room that was, I don't know, $250 a month. And the rest of my money went to food and nightlife exclusively. And I was broke and my life was tumultuous and 
volatile and I was all over the place, but I remember that time so fondly that I feel like it it poses something for me that I haven't quite figured out yet, where it's this mixture of a danger for me because I sort of know that that road leads nowhere, but also this question of why does it even need to lead anywhere if I was enjoying it? And that's sort of where I've left it for years, but I guess I don't need to think about it all that much because that kind of thing, this kind of life is always there. It's always available. I'm not losing the chance or anything. <laughs> There's always gonna be seed to be found. I could have handled those brats. She's a problem and we all know it. We. She feels threatened. You failed. Don't disappoint me again. This is the kind of thing where he just likes Powder better. It doesn't really matter. He's making his decisions based on his feelings about the people. What happened? She already told you. And she's in the room. One of those firelight wackos was a girl. With pink hair. Your sister. Sisters, right? You can't live with them, can't stuff them back in the old baby maker. <laughs> Did she have some kind of like brain injury? What's going on with these weird flashes? I'm doing this for us, Jinx. All of us. Jinx. She took on that name. It is red eye. Or purple eye. Savika will clean up today's mess. Savika? Savika? I, I don't need time. I'm already great and I can take care of myself. And she's sensitive about that. <laughs> she's heard a lot of that in her life. And also doubts that she actually is capable given the fact that she destroyed her whole life. Yeah, I like the, I don't know, I like the underground bar better. It's more fun. It's boring. The only one actually worth my time is him. The golden boy. <laughs> the guy, he's got his face on a blimp. <laughs> Who believed in Jace when he was nothing, huh? Who is it that saw Jace's potential? Who is it that believed in him when he was a nothing? When he was being arrested and having his research destroyed and having his good name tarnished? Who was the one that said that Jace would be the one to change things? That he was the one who really understood science? I'm taking all credit for Jace's success in this fictional show. Speak of the devil. But I feel like that sets up Jace for a fall though. He's on this huge pedestal. He's not even a person. He's just like a, a figurehead, someone to cozy up to. Representatives from all over the world have come to see what new wonders the City of Progress has to offer. If there's a time to present a new creation, you burn it is now. Heimdover's cat, and he took that personally. They're building the Eye of Sauron too. Scientist, but he's old. He only <laughs> wow, she really didn't mince her words there. It's your speech. Give the people a glimpse of the future. See, Jace is in danger because everyone wants a taste. Everyone wants a taste of the Jace. He's a smart guy, but he doesn't really seem. Business or political savvy. It wasn't her. It wasn't. I'm confused about it if it was or wasn't. Savika will clean it up. Savika's a regular Johnny on the spot. Oh, we hate Savika. I'm not weak. Yeah, I mean weakness is not her issue right now. Please. It's alright, Jace. No pressure. This will only change the fate of Jace. your life and the entire time. world. He's got. I love it. I kind of want Jace merch. I'm not gonna lie, it's growing on me. This show is just advertisement for Jace merch. I know many of you probably didn't expect to see me here today, and believe me, I'm just as shocked as you are. Classic, <laughs> classic opener joke. Oh no, Ivan, what are you doing? Oh, are they gonna sample this thing? Even though Hilmdover told him not to. Well, not listening to Hilmdover worked the, worked the first time, so. <laughs> you can feel it coming. His Moogle sense is tingling. But this time, I don't know. I don't know, Jace. You're pushing it, flying a little close to the sun here. But no, believe in Jace and his vision. And believe in Ivan, too, the unsung hero. When the time is right. That was mature. It's not unreasonable to wait until it's fully developed. For we are the city of progress, and our future is bright. There you go. A couple of fist pumps in the air solved that problem. <laughs> what? What? Huh? Oh, fair weather friends, am I right? That feeling when your potential girlfriend who just wants your success leaves because you didn't facilitate her own success. Relatable. But does this create rifts, I wonder? Oh no, it's a trap. This is powder proving she's not weak. Speaking of front lines, he's got this very distinct calling card. It's so sad. I mean, Powder is still... So much has changed, and she's this quote-unquote adult. In a way, she's carrying that the weird baggage of the first episode. The gemstone is gone, along with some of our research papers. It's powerful, powerful technology to put in their hands. 
For too long has the underground been left unchecked. We've lost touch. They just forgot about them. The Undercity cannot be controlled. You don't need to control them. How about giving them some technology? How about helping them out a little bit? Could the trenchers build a weapon with a stolen crystal? Shimmer. Those things are already weapons. Like, <laughs> the way Jace was using them. He almost killed Fundigger's cat. I have come before you to recommend that we suspend all hex tech operations until the situation is resolved. It's very mature. And the hex gates. Why the hex gates? Thousands would lose their income. Am I to tell the Noxians their next shipment of wine will be vinegar? Perhaps the time has come to explore a more radical solution. And my, my tickets. Let's explore my tickets. I propose that a new chair be brought forth and that House Talus be elevated to this august body. Does the boy have any experience? He built your whole city. He's the face of Piltover. What, like, what experience are you talking about? So she's clearly opportunistic, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I don't know what her ultimate goal is, so, you know, politicians are gonna politic. But I feel like in this case, whatever her motives are, she's probably right. I mean, the show put that guy there talking about wine as sort of an easy figure to knock down, like, oh no, my wine. But the truth of the matter is, if the hex gates are important for food shipping, you imagine that closing them would actually have a severe negative impact, no? And just on industry as a whole. Also, like I think I said way back in the beginning, technology is one of those things where it's just going to get out. And it got out a little bit earlier than they wanted, but it was just a matter of time. So, I don't know, you just adapt to that new world as best you can. I believe Councillor Medarda is right. He sees the move, maybe, but... She's not wrong. I mean, for me, Jace gained major politician points just by the move he made willing to sacrifice everything he'd built for what he felt was right. That's rare. That's me! Half a dozen enforcers, dead! It's got a little bit of a Joker vibe. Yeah. <laughs> See how not weak I am? Any idea what you've done? I got this technology, which is a huge game changer. You didn't even know. Like, she sort of saved it. You know, if it was just random violence, it'd be one thing, but she came away with a huge win for their squad. What was that? Was that- did she recreate her little lair as a kid? Was that the kid that used to make fun of her? Wait, what? I gotta see that again. Is that really what this is? Is that what I'm looking at? Am I nuts? This is the guy, right? The guy that used to make fun of her? That feeling when you have your dead friends- Ugh, I can't even. <laughs> Shouldn't you be resting? While the trail is hot. Listen, you know how I've suspected there is a single- <laughs> behind the Thanks for the flowers. Lines? If I can figure out who made this, it could lead me directly to whoever- So much for being blindsided, she's on it. Since when did you concern yourself with the council's opinion? Got some big news. I was actually hoping you might consider joining my staff. It's a good pick. Don't need charity, counselor. Yours or my parents. I mean, you can make the position what you want it to be, no? Get out. This could have gone so much differently if people were a little bit more open-minded in this conversation. Just wasted no time. Uh, well, there's been an incident. What kind of incident? The... Not so Is it Vi? Yeah, it is. Doesn't look like she landed too well either. Now that I can say I'm surprised. Who the hell are you? <laughs> well, does that put Vi on our side? Speaking of value proposals, I feel like she's probably just drifting aimlessly right now herself after the events of what happened. Seems like she's just with this random crew doing God knows what, fighting for survival. Although maybe there's something more to that heist thing she was doing on the airship. Maybe she could actually find some purpose in life by helping out Jace and this soldier, but while also using that as a way to bring closure to the trauma that she experienced with Powder coming head to head with her. It feels like the initial episodes were set up. Amazingly epic and explosive setup, but set up for this crazy confrontation that's gonna happen between the two sides, between Pilt over and this underground, this very dissatisfied group of people in the underground, with Vi on one side, fighting Powder on the other, perhaps in a way carrying out an older conflict, which was Vander versus his so-called brother, and also hopefully improving on it. So we'll have to see where that goes.